What's up guys? It's Brian Nunez here with Horizon Hobby and we've got some good news. We are actually going to be heading to the Proline by the Fire event. This is in Apple Valley, California. It's on May 6th and it's from 9 a.m. in the morning till 10 p.m. at night. Super cool event. All about scaling, having fun, a little bit of bashing. We got all kinds of stuff from sumo wars, mud pits, trails obviously, the whole deal. If you guys want more details, we're going to actually post a link on this post, so check that out in the description. But a little bit more about the show and what we're doing, we're actually gonna be giving one of these away. So we have our actual Twin Hammers kit that we actually put to the prize pool and ProLine will be donating that. In order to qualify for this, you have to be at the show. So please be sure to click the link and check out a little bit more details on that. But this one here is my personal one and I'm actually gonna take this and do a six part video on how to build it but not just how to build it, the quick tips and tricks, including how to put an actual full-size 10-scale servo for your two-speed transmission. I'm talking about shock setup, diff setup, other cool little things. Um, ProLine's gonna hook me up with some stuff I'm gonna throw in there on the well, and we're going to have a cool little theme for the car. So follow us on throughout this build, and we're gonna try to post about two, three times a week about it, and then um, obviously if you're going to the show, please swing by, check us out. Let's move on to the build. So the tools needed for the regular build are red Loctite, black grease, this is included in the kit. Not included in the kit is a good set of needle nose pliers or some type of cutting device. A hex tools, this dynamite one is awesome because it comes with all the bits you need. Um, I'll make sure to set the part number for this in the video description guys. And last but not least, also your electric screwdriver. Now if you guys are planning to do the custom 10 scale size servo upgrade, you will need a drill bit, two and a half millimeters in diameter. You're going to need some type of sanding tool, whether this is a regular sanding block, Dremel tool, something to cut plastic with, like sand scissors will work fine. Some CA glue, and also some kicker. This is foam safe kicker, it's not needed to be foam safe. Uh, it's just what I have handy. And a Dremel tool. So, we're gonna open up the box, and here's what you get, guys. You got bag A. Bag B, bag C, and bag D, bag E, bag F, finally bag G, your manual, your decals of course, and lastly your intent to. So we're going to open up the manual and please pay close attention to page 8 and 9 since it does have good icon keys that will help you out throughout the build, including things to not tighten, over tighten, lock tight, grease, things like that. So I'm going to move on to step A1 here guys, pretty straightforward, but there is some things to pay attention in step A2. Big thing here is notice the diameter differences between your high speed and your low speed gear and also the side with the flange. We're going to assemble this according to the manual. And really, an important step here is to make sure you put a sufficient, if not abundant amount of black grease here. Then, you're going to continue your assembly just as normal, finishing step A2. The next part of the build, guys, is important. And again, put an abundant amount of grease inside this ridge. The actual shifting fork will go in here and this sees constant rotation, so a good amount of grease is good. Once you're done with that, like so, we're able to set it aside and move on to the top shaft. We're gonna build the top shaft here to the instructions and one key thing to note is Using red Loctite, please be sure that this is tight. If not, you will have some issues when adjusting the slippers later on. Now that we're done with the top shaft, we're gonna move on to installing the shifting fork. Now, if you decide to use the optional spacer that keeps it in either low or high speed for the manual, be sure to put an abundant amount of grease. Again, guys, this is only if you wanna keep it in high or low speed, do not install this if you actually want to shift the vehicle. I am going to install it here just to show you guys the complete assembly 
but I will not be running this in the final build since I will be using the two speed option and shift. Please note the differences in gear sizes. And with that, we can grab our built transmission case and install it. Please be sure that the bearing fully seats into the composite transmission housing, like so. Next, we can set that aside and start building our idler. We're going to install that, making sure everything moves freely. And using black grease, we're going to spin the gears, making sure they have a good, nice amount of grease on them. I'm also going to kind of get back there and rotate the transmission with my finger using the out drive as I squeeze grease in the back. Now if that's good, we're going to insert our top shaft, again making sure that that bearing seats all the way down like so. Now using my top shaft, I'm going to rotate the entire transmission assembly and apply grease. Now that we've got a good amount of grease on our gears, we're going to take the other transmission case half and it's important to make sure that both bearings are on the top shaft and the high and low speed gear. The idler shaft does not take a bearing into the casing. Please also make sure whether you're going to run the spacer or not depending on your configuration. And lastly, please note it does not take a lot of pressure to snap these two halves together. If it does, you might have something going on wrong. I'm going to spin my top shaft Make sure everything rotates freely. It does, and ready to go. Now that everything is nice and tight, we can move on to the slipper. Since these slipper pads technically do key into the spur gear, a quick tip is to apply a little bit of glue, like so. Then you can grab your actual slipper pad and firmly put that into place, making sure, guys, this is critical, that the slipper pad little cutouts and the spur gear actually line up like so. Once you're confident that's done, flip it around, do the same thing on the other side. Again, paying close attention that the slipper pad actually goes into the proper slots. Press firmly. Now that all that's in place, it'd be much easier to install. I'm going to take one of the plates, rotate that until it actually goes in like so install the spur gear. It does not matter what side goes on first. The other plate and continue with your build. Now, for now, I'm going to tighten down the slipper all the way and I'm going to back out two turns. We will go back after the build is complete, and I'll show you guys how to set the slipper once the entire transmission and vehicle is complete. But for now, we're gonna tighten down all the way and go out two turns, just like that. I'm gonna spin everything around, make sure everything moves freely, everything looks concentric, and we're good. Next, we're gonna move on to the motor plate. I'm gonna use this Tekken 8.5. Main reason why I'm using this is because it's censored, which would be good for rock crawling, no cogging, stuff like that. Obviously, you guys can use whatever motor you guys prefer running. So of course, be sure to put Loctite on your screws. This is very critical here. And I'm going to point out once this is complete, but when you mount this motor mount, you want to make sure 
that the leads for your wires are facing up. So I'm gonna snug these up one last good time. And you can see at the top of the plate and the leads are facing up. Nothing worse than going through all this guys and mounting the motor and the leads are facing down. Go back and redo your work. So something really important to note. I'm just gonna install everything in and continue with my build. So next, we're gonna move on to setting gear mesh. This is pretty simple. Grab a regular piece of notebook paper, slide it between both gears. And the trick is to just use a little bit of force. A little bit of tension is good enough. We're gonna tighten this down to secure the motor in place. And you know you did this correctly if you can simply just pull the paper out without a tear. Quick note guys, the pinion does not come in the kit. Please review pages 22 and 23 to find out which pinion you need depending on your application. I'm gonna rotate this, everything looks good. I think we're ready to rock and roll. One thing I do wanna point out guys, when you guys install the front out drive, make sure you guys tighten the front set screw using Loctite, but make sure that it goes onto the flat portion of the output shaft. Moving on, we're gonna to go to the rear axle. On the ball end, you wanna notice that there's only one flat spot around the whole thing. Find this flat spot on the plastic portion as well. Both of these surfaces need to mate together. Once you get that in there, a little bit of pressure, pop them into place. You want to make sure they're nice and flush and that section's done. Grab your screw, tighten everything up and you're good. The next important part once you guys get that timed up is first grab the core set screw, a little bit of Loctite, and you're gonna to want to install this portion first because later on we're actually gonna put grease on the ball end. What ends up happening is if you do not set this set screw into that assembly first, grease will actually get into those threads and the Loctite will not hold and you could have a potential future failure. So again, set screw first, then grease, then install the drum into the axle and continue with your build. Once that grease gets worked in there, I like to take a rag and clean off all the excess grease. Once you get all that done, here's a really cool safety feature. It could be a little bit of a pain in the butt to put on, but it's actually a spring that goes around the pin that keeps it from coming out. So you simply just slide this over, and the quick tip is to actually use your fingernail, similar to a key ring, and once you get one edge popped over, you just continue rotating and as you rotate, the whole thing will fully seat. Just inspect the whole thing, make sure that the actual spring is all between the two grooves. And that's a really cool safety feature. Keeps your pins from falling out, having a failure on the trail. Next, we're going to install the rear drive shaft. Grab a set screw, of course, be sure to use Loctite. Typically, anything metal on metal that involves a thread takes Loctite, guys. Now, it does take two set screws for a little bit of extra added security. Again, Loctite. I normally like to thread these into it. And then I'll grab my transmission and of course be sure to tighten these on the flat spots of the output shaft, guys. Now for the fun part, guys. Here is how we're going to mount a full-size 10 scale servo to use a two-speed tranny. So I'm gonna be using this SPMS 602 3 kilogram Metal Gear Servo and this ECX 211009 servo brace. And we're going to have to flatten this stuff out. Not needed, but I'm going to cut off this tab. So let's get moving. 
first, I'm going to grab some Lexan scissors or any other tool you have to cut. Please be safe, guys. I'm going to cut this tab off. It's only about a millimeter and a half, two millimeters thick, so there shouldn't be much hassle. Then, I took my Dremel tool and I sanded those flat. This way, it actually lays flat on the transmission case, like so. All right, next, guys, we need a drill bit. And this drill bit measure out to 2.49 millimeters. 2.49, 2.5 will be good for this build. So again, be sure that it's 2.49 millimeters. Then I'm gonna grab my servo mount. And it just so happens that in the mold of these, the push pin, which is used to eject this part out of the mold, is perfect location to use the existing mount on the transmission. So I'm gonna grab my bit, I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure right on that hole. And I usually do this in order to start the hole. This will keep the drill bit from walking on me when I actually attach it to my electric screwdriver and drill it through. So now that that's in, again, paying close attention to what's on the other end that you're drilling into. Be careful here, guys. And we're going to drill at a slow speed till it pops through, just like so. Get a nice clean hole. I'm gonna clean off some debris here. And a little quick tip, you can always grab an X-Acto and kind of just use it to deburr the edge a little bit, like so. And there's your hole. You'll see that when you throw this on there, it's gonna line up perfectly with that existing hole. Now the next tip that I did is I actually got a round top sanding stone essentially usually comes with your dremel tools and i use this to sand down the plastic that's going to give me the extra room that i need in order to use a flat head screw next i'm going to apply glue and this is important guys be sure to only apply glue on the front half of the case this will allow you to disassemble your transmission if you ever need to without breaking the glue off so I'm gonna mount that there, lining up my holes like so. And again, you're gonna use a flat head screw. A three by 10 millimeter screw will work. Again, this has to be a flat head. It's not included in the kit. And it has to be flat in order for the servo to lay down flat. So I'm gonna screw this in, get her tight. And then once that's pretty snug, I'm actually going to flip the case around and I'm gonna apply glue on the edge. Again, being sure to only apply glue on the front half of the case. This way I can disassemble the two case halves without having to worry about breaking off this mount. So once I do that, I'm gonna let that sit there. I'm gonna grab some kicker and I'm going to spray down the area. This is going to accelerate the gluing process quick in the drying time. I'm gonna flip it over. Again, applying glue to only the front half of the case, just like so. Spray it down with some kicker. That's gonna dry a lot quicker now. And voila. Now you can mount a full size 10 scale servo for your two speed transmission, like so. Now I'm just gonna mount everything up like so. I'm gonna just put the servo horn on here loosely guys just so I don't lose my parts and once we actually get the car built I'm gonna show you guys how to actually set the EPAs on the shipping servo but for now I'm gonna leave the link out. Here's your transmission. Alright guys I think that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Keep tuned for part two. See you guys later. Bye.